we saw this key line from the MAS statement further tightening monetary policy in two ways. It's a recentering of the midpoint of the exchange rate policy band at the prevailing level of the sneer and also increasing slightly the rate of appreciation of the policy ban to continue dampening the effect on inflation. So the core inflation forecast is significantly higher than the average and really we, we, we see, you know, the recentering the band, the raising of the slope but maintaining the width. This is all about inflation, right? Yes, definitely. Actually, with the outbreak of the Ukraine war in February, we had already raised our house uh, core inflation forecast to 3.5%. So it came as no real surprise that they are upgrading the official core inflation forecast to 25 to 3.5%. This is, of course, in light of the uh, you know global supply chain bottlenecks that has been exacerbated and also the Chinese lockdown story. That's going to add to a lot of the manufacturing woes. So I think net-net, this is a more aggressive move uh, in terms of the MES, given that the last two moves they were actually just a steepening of the slope, but this time they combined it with a recentering higher. But to a certain extent, this will be dampened a little bit by the fact that they only steepened the slope slightly. So we are guessing that's around 50 basis point. I think key to watch out ahead really would where the core inflation would peak in the months ahead. They have not referred to exactly when they expect core inflation to peak, but that you'll see elevated for a while longer. So I think that would be very interesting to watch. We've seen dollar yen, uh, just dollar yen, it's a dollar seeing, I should say, falling after the decision, but still staying above that initial support line of 135.22. That's the end of March low there. They held the width, and do they have a bit more buffer and space to do that, given that we actually, despite the war in Ukraine, despite the commodity story, we actually haven't seen much volatility when it comes to the currency side? I think you really hit the needle on the head because um, actually the sing near has been relatively stable around the top end of the band. So the recentering higher effectively gives it headroom to manoeuvre for the next six months out into the scheduled October meeting itself. But, uh, you know, the slope uh, the steepening was really very well anticipated by the market already. So that was the baseline. So, you know, it really comes as no big surprise to the market, which explains why I think the dollar sing is also fairly well behaved this morning after the MES announcement. How much will this move help, given that, of course, we had some fee adjustments in public transport as well, not to mention manpower costs and GST hikes in the Singaporean economy as well? I think we have to be a little bit careful from here because the first quarter growth has been softening from the second half of last year. Uh, I am expecting that second quarter onwards should see a better performance, mainly because of the lifting of the border controls and also the relaxation of a lot of the restriction measures. So, you know, the services side, I think, will pick up a bit of slack that we're currently seeing in manufacturing. So on one hand, while the manufacturing and electronics PMI numbers are starting to soften because of the inventory and supplier and uh, imported inflation story, but the services side should perform better. So net-net, I would still say that we are on track for the 3 to 5% growth. In fact, we had shaded down our full year growth forecast to 3.5%. Uh, there could be some upside if tourist numbers and consumer spending actually picks up from here. How much of your forecast depends on what happens in China as well? I think we are taking a careful look at China because the, the lockdowns um, are affecting some of the industrial activities uh, currently mainly in the auto sector. But uh, if the philosophy that you know, they want to target a zero COVID strategy for the country doesn't change in the near term. It could mean that, you know, the contagiousness of the Omicron uh, virus could also mean that there could be further city lockdown and that could mean downside risk to China. So there will be some spillover effects, I suspect, into the regional manufacturing supply chains. So the first quarter, you know, contraction in the domestic manufacturing uh, sector is a little bit disconcerting. Um, we have to see whether this corrects itself in the months to come. Selena, we're seeing some of the comments when it comes to inflation from the monetary policy statement from the MAS that policy is to continue dampening the inflation effect. The inflation forecast to pick up sharply in the coming months. The CPI all items inflation forecast rising to between four and a half to five and a half percent. Core inflation projected at between two and a half to three and a half percent from two to three percent back in January. The language that's being used, uh, fresh shocks to the global commodity price 
price picture. Supply chains adding to pressures. They're saying that the MAO's core inflation brings to a significantly higher level than its historical average. You take a look at the language that we saw from the likes of the RBNZ, from the Bank of Canada, with those big moves. Is there a sense that this is another central bank that's realised that price pressures are starting to get away from them? I think that realization really came with the Fed um, sometime back in December, and things have really, you know, gone on a roller coaster ride since then. So it's a matter of matching the hawkish rhetoric that we're coming, that we're seeing coming out from a lot of the major central banks. It is not a surprise. I did expect that headline inflation would overshoot the four percent handle. So, like I mentioned, uh, it is about uh, time that the official headline and core inflation gets upgraded. I think they have basically dropped the story that, you know, we'll see inflationary pressures pick around the centre of uh, this year and subside in the second half of the year. I think, if anything, it may be a repeat of what we saw last year where actually inflationary pressures did not subside in the second half of the year and actually persisted into the year end. So I think that's going to be the story for a lot of central banks from here.